Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out the Sins of a Solar Empire 2 technical preview. Now, the version number is on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. If you can't read that, it's 1.0.21, today's date being January 4th, 2023. So if you like what you see here, this pre-early access slash pre-alpha is uh, on Epic right now. Um, I got it for 25% off because of Epic's holiday coupon thing. Um, I could have waited for a press copy for this, but um, I'm a big fan of Stardock in general, so uh, I don't mind supporting their stuff. I bought Galactic Civilizations 4, and now I'm checking this out. Um, just to give you a heads up, I have played Sins of a Solar Empire 1. I've played Rebellion. Um, I enjoy all of those games. Uh, specifically, I like the Star Trek mod that is available for it. But anyway, what are you going to get with this particular version of the game? That's what I'm going to show you today. Now, keep in mind, I've been playing for about four to five hours. I don't have... I'm not one of those people that memorizes all of the ship's and what they're good at, uh, what they're good against, I, I don't, I'm not that kind of player. I just build a variety of things and throw them at my opponent and hope for the best. It drives people that are highly strategic with this kind of thing crazy. But anyway, this is what you get. You've got two maps, that's it. And one's a medium custom map, which is pre-designed. The other one that just recently came out was this randomly generated one. So one's a fixed medium custom map, one is a randomized medium map. Now, there's no small, there's no large maps, no huge maps. It's all under medium three to five players. Uh, you can load a game from here if you want. Multiplayer, LAN, watch, and modding are all grayed out. I cannot select them right now. Upper right-hand corner is your settings menu. Under graphics, you can resize your window, but that's about it. Uh, if you hit apply, that'll take you into a windowed mode. Um, you can also go full screen if you want. Sound, I have the music off just to prevent any sort of copyright issue. If I get some confirmation from Stardock in the future that music is safe to stream, then I'll be happy to do that. Uh, user interface, you can adjust that as well. Keep in mind, if you are playing in windowed mode, um, if you're in the uh, tech area of the game where you're upgrading things military and civilian-wise, you can't scroll to the right. So if this is too big or your window is too small, you won't be able to see all of the Tech 5 stuff. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that's one thing I hope they add is a scroll bar for the tech tree so that I can scroll left and right. Because I have bad eyesight and I need to usually turn the UI scaling up in games like this. But anyway, so what I will do is show you what you can do with a, a, a setup. Um, there are two... There's, a, there's one faction in the game, but there's like two sub-factions. There's the Loyalists and the Rebels. Um, the, I don't know really the difference like in units. I, again, I'm, I'm not heavily invested in the lore of this game. According to the description on the right, um, the, loyalists, the Loyalists have a garrison command. They start off with a garrison, which allows them to automatically like pump out units that will just, they're, they're not really controllable, but they just kind of stay within the area of influence. Uh, the rebels, on the other hand, have this, um, let's say, invigorated and inspired by their continued indoctrination. They always return to battle with a renewed ruthlessness and improved effectiveness in combat. Now, I, again, that doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Some kind of plus five to this or plus ten to that, I think, would have been a bit more helpful to newbies like me that don't really care about the the lore and stuff. Just tell me what it does. Just tell me, like, what is the ability? You know, make it, outline it for us dumb people. Uh, so <laughs> you can do color schemes, but it doesn't seem like I can adjust, like, it's weird. Like, I can, I can, I can click on them, but nothing's, like, changing as far as I can tell. Like, that's orange, um... That's white. Now, is that going to be blue? No, it's not. But this is blue. Like, I don't know what this is. When I click the top row, these bottom row, these bottom row ones come up. 
like I'm not sure what this is. Like, what does this mean? If I click a bottom one, this doesn't change at all. But if I click the top one, that changes. So I don't know if it's like a, I, I don't know. Maybe it's an outline for the ships. If I had to guess, I, I, I again, uh, technical preview, but I would like some more information. What is the top row and what is the bottom row? And w w clicking the top row changes the bottom row. So what does it mean? That's what I want to know. Um, you can change the, uh, you can close out slots, but you can also change the difficulty on the right. There's unfair, nightmare, impossible, easy, medium, hard. So there's like six levels. I put it on easy for my playthrough. Uh, behaviors, aggressive, defensive, research, economy. Um, again, there's two factions, rebels and loyals. Um, yeah, and you can do a team-based. It's either free-for-all or team. So it's up to you. But again, this is a very limited. Options, orbiting planets, home planet victory, and colonization victory. Those are the options available for options. No map details, as far as I can see. It's just grayed out. All right, so let's now jump into my save file. This is the one I've been playing for about five hours. So you start off with one planet, like in Sins of a Solar Empire, as you typically do. And you click on the planet, and you typically want to improve it. So on the very bottom of the screen you've got various buttons. Uh, it looks like they've streamlined this a bit compared to Rebellion. But logistics will improve your civilian slots and your your structure builders and uh, your surface slots. Surface, yes, your, your planets can now house buildings to a limited degree. Um, on the left-hand side of the bottom left here, there's a little button. Actually, yeah, so if I click on that, a little bar has popped up. There's like a commercial district, hardened bunker, um, media conglomerates, munitions plant, and so on. These are various structures that will give you various things. Sometimes planet health, sometimes like military uh, tech. Uh, yeah, so in your research tree, you need to um, go up tiers on the very top. And you need a certain amount of points in order to reach the next tier. So you can reach, you can get those points by either building these orbital research stations, which you can do in Sins 1 and Sins Rebellion. But in Sins 1 and Sins Rebellion, there were, there were civilian orbital facilities and military orbital facilities that you could build separately. There's one structure in this version that does both. Um, the orbital research station um, will give you, I think it's one point for military and one point for civilian, uh, as far as adding to your, your tech, uh, your tech limit. So, um, yeah, so long story short, on the very bottom, you've got logistics where you can just improve your build slots and the like. Next one over is defense. This is for military stuff. And if I'm going too fast, just pause the video uh, orbital structures, um, you've got civilian on the left and military on the right. Um, as far as civilian, there's metal extractors and crystal extractors. But what's weird is that you don't actually build them in the beginning of the game. There's actually a tech that you have to unlock in order to build them. You have to rely on your planet's inherent income uh, before you can even think about building orbital extractors. Um, so this is my home planet, for example, and on that very long tooltip list above my head, you'll see like credit income, metal income, uh, crystal income, and so on. And uh, you can see asteroids below that, zero of two, two of two. So you are going to be earning just metal and crystals just from the planets at first, and then via technology, you're going to unlock the ability to mine out the asteroids that are around you. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, what else we have here? There's the light factory, which is for your smaller ships, like frigates. Your heavy factory is for like your cruisers and your capital ships. Yeah, there's no capital ship um, structure in this game. It's just the heavy does both the, the cruisers and the battleships. Um, you've got an orbital research station, which does like one point for each tech limit. Uh, again, on the very top, there's military civilian. And in order to reach these higher tiers, you have to spend like, here's an example. 
I'm under the civilian tree. I need 20 research requ civilian research required. I have 17. So before I can get to the tier 5 civilian stuff, I need at least 20 research. And again, I can do that by building these orbital research stations. There's also, like I said, structures that you can build on the planet's surface. Like this, for example, the Civic University that I constructed. Plus two to civilian research. So that's another way of earning the tech points that you need to reach those quotas. So logistics um, helps you build more buildings on the planet's surface. You've also got defense for... Military slots, anything military-wise like cannons and retrofit bays and hangar defense, star bases, those all require some kind of military slot. Every building has like a, 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 a cost to it, not only in immediate resources, but in terms of like slots. So if you, if you have a total of 20 slots and the star base costs 8, you have 12 slots left to build anything else, but you could increase that with your defense. And again, those are just arbitrary numbers. Orbital structures, mentioned that already. Building ships, assuming you've got um, uh, either the, the light factory or the heavy factory, you can build corvettes. Um, there's the scout and the shriken gunship. Um, frigates, you've got the cobalt light frigate, protev colony frigate. Uh, siege frigates, there's a Garda Flak frigate, and a Neruda en Envoy frigate, which is for diplomacy. I don't do a whole lot of diplomacy in this game, to be honest with you. At least e in any game, I, any in any Sins game I play, I, I just avoid it. It's just useless. I'd rather build a Titan and just wreck them. Uh, the Carrier Cruiser, the Robotics Cruiser, which is like a, a healer. There's uh, Ar RRM Cruiser, there's uh, Har Harka Heavy Cruiser, I'm going to butcher all these, Orgov Torpedo Cruiser, and they all have special things. Just read the blue text on the very bottom of the tooltip, that'll give you a heads up of what it does. Capital ships in the game right now, Coal Battleship, the Akin Battle Cruiser, the Dunoff Battle Cruiser, the Marza Dreadnought, and the Sova Carrier. And again, pause if you want to see any of these in greater detail. There's no Titan in the game yet. Um, so those are ships. Now again, these are this, this is not the Rebel Faction. Uh, I'm playing as the loyalist, Loyalists. So um, you may see a different, slightly different loadout with them. Commerce. This is where you can go just to increase your credit income for the planet. This is just an improvement. Same thing with mining. This this improves the inherent mining abilities of the planet. Not the stuff in orbit, but just surface mining stuff. Then your excavation. Uh, like in previous sins, you can explore the planet's surface for various things. Um, if there are anything, it'll appear uh, on the bottom left. It, like garrison command. Max garrison supply plus 25. Or, uh, you know, you, you just you click on this a number of times and you have to spend resources to do it. Um, and you can do that for all of the planets that you've controlled. Let me see if I can find one that doesn't have any yet. This one here. Yep. So if I zoom in on that, just to look at it. And then excavation. So 400 credits, 100 metal, and 100 crystal. There's also a, a discovery chance for exotic minerals, which I'll get to exotic in a minute. But that's another resource in the game that you'll need. So I'm going to click on that, say, three times. And this will add to the queue on the bottom left. So, very top of the screen, you've got diplomacy. That seems to be fairly limited, but you can send each other resources, demand, supply, all that good stuff. Alliances. I don't care too much about that. Um, next are minor factions. And what's interesting is that on occasion they will auction up something and you can bid on it. And if you win the bid, then you earn the resource down here. You click on it one time for a one-time bonus. So this metal stockpile, 1,800. If I click on that, now I've just added 1,800. It got consumed, but I just added 1,800 metal. So on occasion, like I said, they will offer up something for auction. People bid on it. And if you win the bid, then you get a temporary, just like a consumable that you can get. Crystals, credits, and metal seems to be the primary thing there. But there are other things. Uh, what does that say? Auction started. Oh, there we go. So if I want to bid on this... Uh, metal stockpile. I can. I'll just bid a hundred credits for that, or I could bid some. Looks like exotics, which I'll get to exotics. But yeah, there are a couple of minor factions in the game, and until you find them, you can't actually trade. There's a market button here, 
and you can buy and sell middle, buy and sell crystal, sell exotics, you can't buy them. But before you can even access this, you have to find the uh, NPC factions in the environment. They look a little something. Uh, there's one there. Uh, the Surubu Merchants. Kind of hard to see them because I don't have any ships there. There's the pirate faction. There's another faction here. I think I have someone here. Yep, they're just, an, they're just an NPC faction. They leave me alone. But you can actually interact with them further. Like you can declare war on them. Just, if you click on them, you can break alliance or close the window. Uh, I see no reason to break the alliance. So there's that. Um, what else we got? Um, research. So as I kind of hinted to earlier five tiers of research and it goes from left to right one complaint i have is that i can't tell what i've researched already and what i still need to research the color of the window looks exactly the same as far as i can tell the only it's hard for me to see i'm thinking the completed ones have that orange border around it but because of my eyesight it can be very difficult to distinguish um so this is nuclear strip mining I'll click on that, queue that up. The queue is on the very bottom of the screen. I like that shaded orange. I, I wish that were like, like maybe a green, a light green would tell me that I've researched it already, like a background like that. So I, I would prefer something other than an orange border, to be fair. And then military, civilian, you just, you know, Throw, throw resources at this tree to get better. And again, you can't go up the, the uh, tech tree until you get enough tech points for each tier. And you have to click on these in order to do it. So if I clicked on that, I don't have the research, civilian research yet. But if I did, I'd spend uh, money and metal and crystal and the exotic resources listed there in order to get level five. And then these become available for me. I keep mentioning exotics. Um, I'm going to click on that real quick. Exotics you can find by excavating a planet or you can create them. There is a refinery building that you can put down. And the more refineries you put down, the more you can convert at a time. But you're going to spend, for example, this Toronite. Uh, it costs 400 credits, 125 metal, 125 crystal. If I click on that, it'll now queue up down here. I'm going to go ahead and maybe queue up that one and that one and that one and that one and now two are being made at a time because i've got two total refineries throughout my entire empire if i build more then all of these will be done all at the same time assuming i've got five to do so but you will need these to construct your cruisers or your battleships rather and to reach certain tier levels and certain technologies i think need certain exotics so you will need that Hovering over um, a resource, by the way, will give you a heads up as to where you're earning your income from and what your net is. Okay, so that's the interface. One cool thing is that whenever you acquire a new planet, it doesn't automatically get added to the bookmark on the left. Rather, you can click and hold on something, uh, maybe this one, click and hold and then add it as a bookmark to the left. Now I've already got it added as a bookmark, so I'm not going to do that. But you click and hold, it turns into its own little icon, and then you can drag it to the left and add a bookmark. So now I can sort of pick and choose what what I want to focus on. Is this planet important to me? Sure, I'll just add, I'll add it as a bookmark over there. That's really cool. Um, what was I doing? Okay, I captured that. Oh, there's loot in this game. Um, let me just... Quickly send oh, all of these God. guys up here. Easily done. Easily done. Um, as far as graphics are concerned, um, the planets are beautiful to look at. Ready for battle. Very highly detailed. I don't know if there's a way for me to focus my camera on that, but you can actually see the little windows and the lights. I love that. Really nice to look at. Stability-wise, I did crash once in my four hours of playing. That being a technical preview, I think that's still fairly impressive. Uh, auction started. Allied Metal Market. I'll just bid on that. Buy metal price minus 20%. Oh, right, well. They're entering hyperspace. Okay, now let's zoom out and come up here. Is there combat? Now, I don't know if I'm going to win this combat, to be honest. But if I sit my battleship in this loot area it'll loot this assets found 1248 crystal 
So if you put a battleship in there, you can loot it. Uh, I'm not going to waste my resources on trying to kill these things, but I guess I can show you the combat while I'm here. Kind of difficult to focus on any one thing because they're all over the place. Who knows, I might still win, but we'll see. I sincerely hope whoever modded the Star Trek version of, of Rebellion also does this one too. I'm not as heavily as invested in the Star Dock lore as I am with Star Trek. I hate, I'm sorry to say for you fans out there. I love the shields and how they sort of like flare up whenever whenever they get hit. I, I just think that's really cool. Um, where was I at? Um, up here, I think? Right here. Okay. Nope. I think I'm here. No? Well, I lost my ship. I don't know where it is. Um, oh, here it is. That's one downside is when you rotate the camera to a particular angle. Um, oh, are they attacking me down here? I think it was up here, actually. Yeah, let's just... I Oh, I beat them. And I still have some shields left. Maybe I'll get lucky and take them out. But it looks like they're atta attacking me here. Luckily, I've got a number of things to help me out. Um, I think... Do I have a star base? I thought I did. I don't. That's one thing I may want to do is add a star base here. Okay, so let's go to that, and yeah, we'll put a star base right there. Great, that'll help. Now, there are phase jump inhibitors in the tech tree, but I, I see no way to build them, so I don't think they're in the game yet. I could be wrong about that. Um, yep. Yeah. I'm not too worried. Yeah. Anything with a, like a, if you look at the icon to the right, the tooltip, that white plus shield thing on their on their picture, that is uh, a garrison. Those are ones I cannot directly control. Um, if I build a garrison recruitment center and have an idle shipyard in the area, it will just construct ships for me automatically that will act as a garrison that will protect that immediate area. And I've sort of hemmed in red here as best as I could. Um, just to sort of play around a bit with the various aspects of the game. Am I winning over here? It's still tight, but I, I think I can handle this. Now it looks like we got... So now the, the circle will turn green. Sorry, hit this camera. So now the circle turns green, and on the right-hand side, the tooltip says 110 seconds. So after that, I'll gain 1,248 uh, purple crystal. As for the other capital ships, I've got them uh, saved here. Um, I guess I should bring them over here because, yeah. So I think this is my fleet. This one's level 5. I love I love the detail on that. Ready for battle. Another cool thing is that these these battleships have slots themselves, a component slot. As they level up, you can add more. Um, the default one for your very starter ship is this exotic salvage policy. So whenever it gets destroyed, it will refund the exotics. The exotics are like a, more of a mid to late game resource. Um, so if you lose your beginning battleship, you can be screwed. But your beginning battleship starts with this exotic salvage policy automatically, so even if it does get destroyed, you're not locked into never having one again until late game, which is awesome. I love that. But you can, there's a list of various things here. Salvage kits, these are like one-time use, well, three uses for this salvage kit. It just heals your, heals your ship. There's a radiation bomb, there's a flak burst, uh, volatile accelerants, there's reserve squadron hangar, antimatter engine, combat repair system, targeting array, rapid auto, auto, uh, auto loader, uh, missile guidance, uh, heavy gauze slugs, and so on. So you can add 
um, various things to your capital ships. And you can still level them up like in previous versions. Um, you, you'll, they'll gain levels and you throw points into their four main abilities. And again, each capital ship has a different ability associated with it. Um, let's zoom out. I'm trying to find my... Uh, I guess I should bring them here. Okay. So let's select all of these guys and we will have them... That's more like it. Okay. Not sure why you're going all the way around for. Easily done. Easily done. That's more like it. All right. Well, I'll let them do their own thing. There Where are these guys at? Destroyed. All right. There's my other fleet. All right. Let's go ahead and select Give them. A planet to bomb. And I think I just move up We're to that one. Way. So the bottom blue is your defensive strength, the bar on the bottom of the planet. If you hover over that bar, you can actually see on the right what that entails, like garrison defenses, uh, ship defenses, and so on. The bar on the left, it's typically blue, but because I have them selected, it's white. But you can see all the different ships that are in that area. Um, but yeah. Um, I don't want to go too much into this because, like I said, this is still a tech preview. But I wanted to show you what you were getting should you decide to pick up this game. Uh, Fleet Supply, I forgot about that one. Um, this is uh, this has been handled a little bit differently um, in the tech menu. Instead of it being its own tech area, if you go to Civilian, I think it's, no, maybe Military. Yeah, Military. On the very top, there's just basic provisioning, uh, doctrine, deployment, and it just gives you more supply. Um, in Rebe or in um, uh, Sins 1, and I keep calling it Rebellion. I lost sight of it at this point. Um, you typically would have a separate capital ship cap and uh, just a regular fleet supply cap. The capital ship affected both, whereas your little ships only affected the one, the smaller one. In this version, there is no capital ship cap. It's all supply points. So if you run out of supply points, like here's here's a quick overview of that. My uh, battleships are 50. Everything else is like, you know, it, it, the points vary based on how many I have. I also like this. You can see at a glance all of your colonized planets and you can upgrade them from here if you want to. Uh, you can see what you have yet to, to do in terms of excavation. Um, any red that you see is because you've, uh, you've taken over a planet that is not fully upgraded yet or can't be because of the weather there. Like if you, if you, if you take a, an, an Arctic planet, but uh, you can, in your tech tree, there should be like Arctic upgrades. So as you research your Arctic upgrades, you'll get more access to developing the planet. Little things like that. I'm pretty sure I've covered 95% of everything. I may have missed one or two things, but um, I'm enjoying this so far. Um, again, my only real complaint with the tech tree is that it's difficult for me to see what I've already researched. I find myself hovering my mouse over all these tooltips, trying to figure out what I still have to research at this point. I would love some way to better differentiate the, uh, you know, the already researched versus what still needs to be researched. But I'm enjoying this. Um, I'm enjoying the graphics. Um, it still hurts that it's not Star Trek yet, but, you know, it is what it is. Now, what's going on here? Um, these must be, yeah, these are all, these are, these ships are all garrisons. I guess they're just coming after this planet to come after this planet. Don't know why. I don't need it at this point, but hey, I'll take it. All right, folks. Well, there you go. Uh, if you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I'm going to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. Take care.